volume by volume percentage it is defined as volume of solute present in 100 ml of solution which is having no unit and the third one weight by volume percentage which is amount of solute present in 100 ml of solute. is possible for me to calculate number of moles is we can find out easily by knowing weight in gram divided by molecular weight of a particular solute if the value is known to you you can substitute and find out the number of moles we can find out the mole fraction in case of b in the same way just substitute number of moles of b with respect to total number of moles addition of these individual mole fraction is equal to 1 so fractions so addition of these individual fractions will contribute to 1 we solve a simple problem based on it what are the mole fraction of components of solution formed when 92 g of glycerol is mixed with 90 g of water molecular weight of water is 80 and molecular weight of glycerol is 92 so molecular weight and weight in gram these two things are known to you how will you calculate the moles very good weight in gram divided by molecular weight so we need to find out first the number of moles of water number of moles of glycerol here we got the answer for water as 5 mole and glycerol as 1 mole so total will be 6 so individual mole fraction we can find out by putting number of moles of water divided by total number of moles and mole fraction as 0.833 in case of glycerol we can find out by 1 divided by 6 as 0.167 addition of these mole fractions we get answer 1 so in this case the answer is known to you as 1 so you sure that when answer is 1 you are making sure that your all steps are correctly performed parts per thousand parts per million and parts per billion number of parts of components per thousand parts of solution that represents parts per thousand parts per million number of parts of component per 10 to the power 6 million power of solution here 10 to the power 9 that is billion powers of solution same we can express in terms of equation as weight of solute with respect to weight of solution multiplied by 10 to the power 3 We'll explore regarding PPM further here, and this is the solution which you require most of the time for sophisticated instruments, where parts per million. Simply, we can write it as one milligram per liter, or in terms of ml, we can 
quote here as 1 microgram per ml or 1000 microgram per liter this is very important equation to remember while preparing the ppm solutions and doing their calculations based on finding amount of solute present in known or unknown solution so here further these equations are expressed in various units if i take 1 gram of solute and dissolve in 1000 ml that will be 1000 ppm molarity number of moles per liter of solution molarity number of moles so number of moles you know how to calculate we have done uh, in last two examples where weight in gram divided by molecular weight will give me number of moles millimoles we can easily calculate as weight in gram divided by milli molecular weight so molarity is number of moles divided by volume of solution in liters here we can calculate simply for this particular example molarity of 0.32 moles of nsl in 3.4 liter of solution so you just need to substitute the number of moles need to substitute the volume in liters and you get the answer for molarity of solution normally during experiment sometimes prepared solutions are there in the lab and for the same solute we need to prepare some another concentration in that case how i can utilize this concept of molarity so this is molarity of dilution where you can write down simply m1 v1 equal to m2 v2 before dilution and after dilution substitute the values your required dilution will be substituted over here m2 v2 your the solution which is already in a stock whose molarity is known to you you can substitute over here and you will easily find out the volume which should be picked out from that stock solution got it molality number of moles per gram of solvent where here volume is expressed into kg or grams of solvent where your equation will change as number of moles of solute divided by mass of solvent in kg so here we will find out molality of this solution where 0.66 moles are present in 2 kg of water need to substitute the values in above equation with number of moles and solvent in kg and you will get the answer for molality which is represented small m normality which is uh, found out by knowing number
City of acid or number of replaceable H plus ions. And in case of bases, as equivalent weight equal to molecular weight divided by acidity of a base that will present number of OH minus replaceable present in my given base. For example, in these acids HCl, HI, HBr, you will have only one H plus ion to get replaced. So, in that case, molecular weight equal to equivalent weight. But when I am moving for diabasic acid, H2SO4 or oxalic acid, the equivalent weight will be equal to molecular weight divided by 2. Same is observed in case of NaOH, KOH and CaOH2 and BaOH2. This particular table will be very useful for you in case of acids to find out their equivalent weight and specific molarity and normality of solution. This table provides you an information of molecular weight of each of these acids, their equivalent weight depending upon number of H plus ions, normality of acid, very important. It should be considered during calculation specific gravity and their molar concentration. This is the task given to you in the last box for you to find it out. Now, if any one acidic solution is already prepared in a lab, as I told you, you can go for a dilution formula M1 V1 equal to M2 V2 by substituting the values, you will find out how much amount of particular solute to solution to be picked out for further dilution. And the second formula here represents you. Once you know the equivalent weight, you can go by this way as 1 molar 1000 ml corresponds to equivalent weight. Then further whatever normality molarity of solution you need to prepare, you just substitute that values and you can calculate the particular weight to be picked out from the solution or solvent. table follows as these are all solids you know don't need to take into consideration the specific gravity of solution molecular weight equivalent weight I have specified as they are having here in case of calcium hydroxide there are two replaceable OH minus ion so we need to consider that while calculating equivalent weight and you can easily follow this table while preparing different molarity solutions of bases. These might be the tables you have seen in your uh, practical handbooks, in appendix or some reference books which are categorized depending upon acid, bases, redox substances, their formula, molecular weight and equivalent weight. In case of complex formation and precipitation, uh, precipitation reaction, how it is possible for me to calculate equivalent weight, where you need to take into consideration the reaction where number of moles of substance reacts with number of moles of particular cation or anion. So, equivalent weight of a salt formed in a precipitation is number of moles divided by total valency of reacting ion. So, number of moles of silver divided by valency of reacting ion. If I am carrying out a reaction or precipitation of AgNO3 versus halide like chloride, AgNO3 will react with chloride to form AgCl precipitate. So, for that chloride, the valency is 1. So, number of moles divided by total valency of reacting ion. If it is divalent, then I have to consider 2, trivalent, 3 in case of aluminum <coughs> and so on. This particular table is very important in case of redox substances where the reaction takes place during the uh, titration or precipitation where number of uh, red, uh, redox substances which undergo the reaction they definitely show change in oxidation number or loss of electron and gain of electron. So equivalent weight in case of redox substances is calculated by simply knowing the reaction involved and the oxidation number change in oxidation number during the reaction. So you can find out equivalent weight as molecular weight divided by change in oxidation number or number of electrons lost and gain. A simple example I just want to quote over here. All of you might have done a titration where KMnO4 has been titrated with oxalic acid. Okay. Now KMnO4. What is the oxidation state of Mn over here? Yes, hmm. the oxidation state of Mn over here is plus 7. 
during titration when it, you start titrating the conical flask is not showing you any color oxalic acid is colorless what happens over there chemo4 reacts with oxalic acid and it converts into colorless product in different formats please like share and subscribe this video and wait stay tuned for my further video based on volumetric analysis thank you